Hey guys, how you all doing? I'm Paul the Tech Giant. Welcome back to the channel. Now today we're going to be unboxing this Inmotion L9 electric scooter. Now the way that we're going to do this is I'll give you guys a little tour around the outside of the box. We'll then get the scooter out of the box, we'll get the scooter set up, and uh, we'll take a look around the scooter itself. We'll talk about some of the specs. And then once we've done that, we'll take this scooter out for a little test ride, see what the suspension is like, see what the uh, headlights are like. We'll also take it on some hills and a little bit of rough ground to see how it handles. Now, I just wanna say a really big thanks to the guys at Box for sending over this electric scooter, which has allowed me to make this video. Now, if you do like what you see in this video today, then please go and check out their link in the description where you can go and pick one up for yourselves. Now, I won't say the price at the moment because that price can change from day to day, but if this scooter doesn't float your boat, then don't worry, they do have a wide range of other electric scooters and not only scooters, but e-bikes as well. So please go and check out their link in the description or just go to box.co.uk. Right then, let's crack on. So as we can see, it's the Inmotion L9 and 30% uh, hill climbing, dual shock suspension. So hopefully this should give you a nice comfortable ride. And uh, the final thing that is highlighted, the actual main selling point of this scooter, and that is the extended range up to 95 kilometers, which is massive. And that equates to 59 miles. Finally, moving around to the side, we have a QR code there where you can scan that and download the app. Right, now it's time for the best bit, which is getting the scooter out of the box. Right, so we've got a, uh, some instructions or something just there. Not a lot to see, just uh, a lot of foam at this uh, moment in time bag of accessories there. Let's uh, start removing this foam then. Very well packaged to be fair. It's like it's uh, not gonna be getting damaged whilst it's being transported. There we go. Better look of it like that. So it does look like there is some assembly to do there. Looks like the handlebar will need to be connected up. Oh, hello. I think we've got a bell. There we go. So confirmation of the bell. Right, so there is still some foam attached to the scooter, so I think the uh, best way is just to lift it straight on out. There we go. Let's next take a closer look at the supplied accessories. So we have our quick start guide there and our user manual. Then we have our power brick, which we will obviously use to charge up the scooter. So there's the connection just there, which plugs into the scooter itself. Then we have, of course, cable to go into the power brick to uh, charge it up. Then we have this adapter to inflate the tires. Then we have this clip, which we will fit to the scooter so we can fold down the main handle to the base plate. Couple of Allen keys. And then finally, a uh, few screws for that clip and also to put the main handlebars onto the main pole. Right, so the first thing that we need to start doing with this scooter is uh, putting a couple of bits on it. Easy enough to do. So first thing, just to make it a little bit more easy, is to push down this kickstand. That means that the scooter can now take its own weight. Next, we're gonna have to attach the handlebar, which is easy enough. We're gonna simply just push it into that pole, like that. And then we are gonna lift the pole up. And if you come in a little bit closer, notice you've got this latch just here. As I move that up and down, it moves this section in and out. So when that is up, that lifts up and then pulls that into place, which then obviously locks it. To undo, really simple, you've got this uh, button just there. You push that, pull it back, which releases that, then that folds back down. Now you may find that the first time when you put this together that there isn't enough length on these cables. So simply just give them a little pull 
if you find that there's uh, not enough coming out or simply push a little bit more back in. Again, if there's a little bit too much hanging out. Next up, we've got attached four screws. So we've got four there and the small Allen key. Got to put two in this side and two around the other side. Those are simply to hold the handlebars in place. So now that we've got that clip attached, means that we can now fold down that handlebar. So what we've got to do is obviously just release that. We're gonna pull this down and we're gonna use that like a trigger. We've got this hook just down there. I'm gonna pull that back, release. And there we go, locks into place. Well, that was simple enough to do. I'm uh, sure you'll agree. It's pretty much self-explanatory how to put this thing together. And it's very minimal things that you've got to actually do to get this thing all up and running. So anyway, we're gonna move on now and uh, gonna give you a rundown of some of the specs and uh, got quite a few things to go through, hence why I've got it all written down on a notepad. And uh, yeah, just generally take a closer look. So the top speed on the scooter is 18.6 miles per hour, which is approximately 30 kph. Uh, range, as we spoke about earlier, 59 miles or 95 kilometers. Motor is a 500 watt motor. Uh, we have a disc brake, as you can see, just on the back there. So some decent stopping power. And uh, obviously up front, we've got the lever there for that rear brake. We also have an e-brake. So once you release the accelerator, which is that one just there, that e-brake should help slow down the motor and at the same time regenerate the power into the battery. Next up, we come to the 10 inch tubeless tires. And as you can see, they are nice and chunky. Gonna be really good when it comes to going over some rough terrain. Next up, let's talk about charging. Now this is where things get really interesting. So earlier I showed you this power brick and uh, its connection there. When we wanna charge it, what we have gotta do is uh, pull back one of these protective covers and uh, obviously connect up that charger. Now charging time, if I just get my notepad again, takes approximately uh, 7.2 hours, but you can halve that down to 3.6 hours if you get an additional charger and then plug it into the second port. Great feature that if you want that uh, faster charging option. The DualShock suspension is the next talking point. And as we can see up front, We've got a couple of shock absorbers just there. And then if we uh, lie it down, we can see that rear suspension there also. Now I've drafted in my partner to uh, give me a hand when it comes to demonstrating the suspension on this scooter then. So if you want to uh, hop on and uh, give it a bounce then, Let's, uh, if, if you can balance yourself, hold on to the wall. No one's gonna have a go, that's it. Jiggle the ass. And we can see that, uh, go on, keep going. That suspension moving just there. Now the max user weight on this is 140 kilos. I don't think you're 140 kilos, are you? Which is um, 22 stone or approximately 309 pounds. Uh, talking of weight, the weight of the actual scooter itself, quite heavy comes in at 24 kilograms. Now, something else I wanna point out about is the size of the uh, main deck. So if I get my partner just to stand on that, we can see how much space there is. If you wanna put your feet the other way around, that's it. Now you're, what, about five foot 10, and shoe size about seven or eight. And uh, that's about what sort of space that you get with a uh, shoe size this like is, that. These are seven, seven then. And uh, one thing to point out as well with this scooter is how high the uh, handlebars are. So like I said, you're about 5'10", and just look how high they come up. You know, it will make, you know, most people look quite short, to be honest. Well, see when you stood on it, it's... Yeah, it looks okay like that, but it's push... When you stood on it, but if you want to push it... It does look a bit awkward. It. it looks like, yeah. you know, you're a little kid pushing your dad's scooter about or something like that. But like I said, my partner's quite tall, and even you know, that handlebar makes her look a little bit small. Also worth pointing out about is uh, at the back there, we've got a nice mug guard, 
also one on the front so hopefully that should stave getting uh, your sort of back of your trousers dirty and also we've got a light on the back there and a place for you to put a uh, registration tag. Let's next look at the main control panel. So if you want to come in a little bit closer, as we can see, we've got a protective film going over the top here, but it has got some instructions. So it says uh, one long press to power on and off, two short press to turn on and off the light, three double press to switch riding modes. So let's peel off that. Ooh, very nice. Now if I just demonstrate this to you, so if I press just for not too long, you see the light will go around a bit. If I let off too early, that light will sort of bounce back, but hold it down longer. The light goes all the way around and then we have the power on. Now, as you can see, we've got a few things going on with this display and starting off at the top, we have these bars. Now these indicate how much of the battery we have remaining. Below that, we have our speed. And below that again, we have which mode we are in. And currently we are in Eco. Now you may be wondering to yourself, why do we have a flashing arrow? Now at this moment in time, the scooter is led on its kickstand. But if I just put it into a more upright position, that stops. I put it back, it starts again. What is going on? Well, if I just get my partner to uh, pan back a bit, you will see that we have lights underneath the scooter. Now, if I just put a back kickstand, and if I tilt the scooter to the left, you will see it flashes red. If I turn it to the right, it flashes red on the right because these are indicators. And uh, you don't have to do it just by leaning. If you also turn the handlebars to the left, it flashes, and to the right, it flashes. Very neat feature indeed. Coming round to the rear, and uh, you may notice, like I said, we've got a light on the bike, which at the moment in time is not illuminated. But if I pull on the brake lever, you will see that that lights up to indicate when we are braking. Back round to the front of the scooter then, and uh, you may notice, if you look close enough, we do have two LEDs to illuminate where we are going to at night. and. Uh, like it says with the instructions, one short press of the button will turn that on, which are, uh, if we look around there, you can see it looks pretty good. There we go. But we will test that out outside. And if we look to the rear as well, as we turn that on for the front, it also comes on at the back. And again, if I pull that brake lever, obviously that gets brighter to indicate that we are braking. Now, next subject that we're gonna cover is the app. And like I said, inside the box, you'll find a QR code. You can simply scan to download it. Now, I've already gone ahead and downloaded the app to my Android device. And I'm gonna simply hold down that power button on the scooter, power it up. Then I'm gonna press on the app. Hopefully it should connect straight away. And there we go, simple as that. Now on the display itself, you will see it is indicated a Bluetooth symbol to confirm that it is connected. On the app itself, we've got a few things there. So we've got our speed, which obviously we're not moving, but that is currently in kilometers per hour. We've got our range there as well. We've got a few options, so I can uh, press on that and uh, turn on and off the main light. I can also turn off the scooter. There we go. That's just shut it down to turn it back on again. I will then have to hold down the button on the scooter itself. Hopefully then, there we go, it's come up, connect. And then you will see this lock symbol. Now I'm gonna give you a demonstration of this. So I'm gonna take over the camera from my partner. And what I'm gonna get her to do is just kick the kickstand away and uh, move the scooter back. Just show how easy it moves. And sort of give it a little scoot sort of just across the kitchen then, just show that it does free run. There we go, simple enough. Now if you wanna go back and then just stop, there we go. Now what I'm gonna do is press on that lock. You can see lock. Now do the same again. And as you can see, she is really struggling to uh, get it a move. So yeah, 
It's a, a good little feature to have, you know, if you maybe stop outside a coffee shop or something like that. Still ain't gonna stop someone physically picking it up, but it is 24 kilos, but it just stops someone simply just jumping straight on it and scooting off. Next, if we swipe across, you can see there, we've got a whole range of things going on. So we've got a trip, average speed, max speed, duration, battery uh, level, so on and so forth. And there is another page which I will show you once we are out and about. So if we go back and then press on the cog button up in the top right hand corner, it takes us to another page where we've got a diagnose there, click on that runs a small health check, do the motherboard, motor, battery, display, handlebar, and as you can see, all tick green, so we are uh, good to go. Back to this page again now then, and we have a couple of things repeated. So we've got lock status, we can turn that on or off. Then we have light on and off again. Then we have speed clamp at 25 kilometers per hour. So if I turn that on, that will limit that. Shut that back off. And then we have ride mode. So we've got eco, and then we have standard, as you can see it's changing on air. Sports, and then we have our pushing assistant mode. Further on down, we have our light effect. So if I turn that off, as you can see, if we pan down now, that is turning that on and off. So if you don't want the colors, there you go, that's fair enough. And then also the turn signal. So at the moment that is indicating, but we can turn that off if you don't want those indicators to come on. And we also have cruise control, which I will demonstrate once we are out and about. And then we can also change from kilometers per hour to miles per hour. And again, if we look at the display, there we go, miles per hour and kilometers per hour. Now we've got all that out of the way, I think it's time we take it out for a spin. So we are now out and about, come to this uh, private road. And uh, what we're gonna do first is by starting off in eco mode. So I'm gonna uh, turn on the scooter and it's quite a bright day. Well, I say quite bright, very bright out at yeah, the moment. It's flashing on the screen, and yeah. I can see that easy enough there. We are in eco mode, as you can see. And uh, to get going, what we will need to do is push off with our foot. So you can't just push down on the accelerator. As you can see, that does nothing. So one little push, push down on the accelerator and uh, we will see how we go. Okay, off in eco mode then. And uh, the acceleration is quite slow at the moment and we're sort of maxing out there at about 13 kilometers per hour at the moment so great for the uh, beginner nothing too scary it's not um, over reacting or anything with the uh, press of the accelerator Got a dog, dog now chasing me. <laughs> right, so now we're going to uh, just come to a stop and uh, we're going to change it up to the next mode. So we're going to do a double press and uh, see how that goes. So instantly, that is picking up a lot quicker. And we are topping out at about 24 kilometers per hour now. And I'll tell you what, this road's quite bumpy, but to be fair, it's, uh, suspension's doing a great job. It's nice and smooth. Brakes feel real nice. I'll give them a good test in a minute. Go for a, from a slow start and uh, give it the full beams. Yeah, I can really feel the torque kicking in there. Right, so uh, stopping once again, and we're gonna now put it into the fastest setting, which is uh, sport. Again, gonna kick off and see how quick we accelerate. And that's pulling nice and hard now.
and that's real pokey when you touch on that accelerator it really does pull quite well so again it's something that maybe a beginner would want to uh, refrain from using straight away so let's give it full beans Yeah, that goes really well. Next, we're going to try the cruise control. So if you come in a little bit closer, I've got the app fired up and uh, all I'm going to do is click on automatic cruise control. That's now beeped on this scooter and uh, I'm going to set it off and hopefully enable cruise control. Now, all we need to do to get cruise control to engage is keep the throttle at a steady position and then we will hear that beep as we just have just then. As you can see, I've take, ooh, taken my hand off the accelerator and it's uh, going along all by itself. Now, to stop cruise control, if we hit that brake, that will release it if I just try and engage it again so get to a steady speed there we go it's beat and again to disengage that we can also press on the accelerator and that has deactivated it nice and simple now let's just see how this thing handles going through some rougher stuff so I'm just going to go through this nice and slow so we've got a bit of loose gravel here not a problem at all, easily pulls me through there. Got quite a bit of a pothole coming up. It's bang through that, so it goes. Again, handles that with ease. Some more rough stuff here. Even bigger pothole, look at that. It's more like a mine shaft. So I'm deliberately going through all the uh, rough stuff here and it's actually wheel spinning as I pull out of it. Now we've got some uh, like rough open ground here, a bit of grass going up and down a bit so let's see how well it handles in here. And not a problem this is wow that suspension is amazing really soaking up those bumps and you can see you've had motorbikes over and that it's like a dried up mud, it's not having a problem at all. It's actually wheel spinning every time I hit the accelerator hard. It's actually spinning up the back wheel a little bit. This is a great bit of kit. Fair play, this is a mental scooter. Get real rough along here, look, I've got gravel and everything. Right, finally, what we're going to do is test out the scooter on a bit of a slope. Now, it's uh, fairly steep, it gets even steeper at the top. What I'm going to do is put it in sports mode, see how well it pulls off, and can it pull me all the way to the top. We are already starting off on a slope. So it'll be interesting to see if the uh, motor's got enough oomph in it. So let's push off and hit on the accelerator. Let's just lift up. Well, yeah, that done that with ease. Do you want to be on YouTube? Make you famous. Yes. Oh, cute. <laughs> oh, there we go. I think you're going to be a YouTube star. I reckon we're going to be getting plenty of comments about you. Right, so we're out and about now then at night and uh, we'll see what this lighting is like. So if we get my partner to uh, turn on the headlight. There we go. Quite a bright light. Now, if you want to set off, see what it looks like. Oh, 
So yeah, slighten up that path pretty well. And if you want to apply the brakes, and uh, as we can see that brake light lighting up there, nice and bright. Right, so it's my turn now. And uh, yeah, as you can see, it's uh, not doing too bad of a job lighting up the path. So we have got a few street lights here, but in a minute, those fade away and we should be into some uh, quite dark area, as you can see. Quite a nice wide spread of light. Bit bumpy. A little bit awkward uh, trying to hold the camera and steer at the same time, but you have to forgive me. So yeah, I've not got any problems at all seeing where I am going. So I'm uh, confident that other people will see you come in as well. Right, let's next test out the underfoot lighting. So I've got the app fired up and we're gonna to go to light effect. Click on that, he says. There we go. And yeah, lighting up nice and bright. So if you wanna scoot off, and I've also now put the indicators on. So if you wanna turn the handlebars, so if we all want to turn them that way, there we go, and then the other way. Yeah, nice and easy to see. So off you go. And yeah, you're definitely not going to get missed with those lights on. See those indicators there? Nice and bright. Well, there you go then, guys. Just got to say, once again, a massive thanks to the guys at Box. And like I said, if you do want to pick one of these up for yourselves, then please go and check out the link in the description or go to box.co.uk. Now, if you have enjoyed this video today, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed, then please do so. So thanks very much for joining me today. And hopefully I'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye for now.